Okay, folks, Jason here. I'm going to walk you through the appearance panel in Illustrator. And this is something that's really amazingly interesting. If you have never used the appearance panel before, it is just, it'll, it'll blow your mind how much you can do with the appearance panel. I've drawn a shape here and I've got a circle. And in the appearance panel, you can see that I can adjust my stroke attributes, the stroke color by clicking on that and applying the stroke and changing the size of that stroke weight and clicking on the stroke link to change into the attributes of the stroke. Same with the fill. I click on the fill. I have my drop down menu for my swatches and my colors and so good to go here. Now what's interesting about the appearance panel is that you can go in and you can change the opacity of these items as well. I'm going to open up these little twirlies here and you can see that I've got the opacity of the stroke, which is really quite interesting. I'm going to beef up the stroke weight here to something big so you can see what's going on. I can change the opacity of this stroke, which then allows me to have the opacity of the stroke set to be transparent, but not the fill. And what's interesting with this is that you can see that when you apply the stroke by default, it always happens in the middle of the shape. So a 20 point stroke gives me 10 points on the inside of the shape, 10 points on the outside. So the fill and or the stroke can be adjusted separately. Now what's interesting about this is that I can adjust the overall opacity of my shape as well as the individual stroke and fill separately and then the initial shape overall. And once I do this, then when I put it over something, you can see I get that translucent effect right there. What's interesting with this is, is this works the opposite of the layers panel. The overall opacity for everything that we're doing is actually on the bottom of the list of items here, which is kind of interesting. Now the stroke is on top of the fill here and it's like, well, yeah, I mean, wouldn't you want that? But you know, here's the crazy part. Very much like a layers panel, you could go in here and you could select this stroke and you could drag it below the fill. So funny enough, the stroke is now behind the object. And it's like, what, seriously? You mean I don't have to have two separate objects and put one behind the other to do that? The answer is no, you don't. Because this acts very much like the layers panel in that regard where these things are attributes that can be moved around. Now, why do I have this little sushi roll next to this right here? Because I wanna show you what you can do in the appearance panel to make this really quite amazing. This is one shape, by the way, folks. And if I do my command or control Y to go into outline mode, you can see that's just one shape. That's all that it is, just that one shape. It's like, that's kind of crazy. And all these attributes are put onto this one shape in the appearance panel, multiple fills, multiple strokes. And it's like, really? It's like, yeah, because we can do that. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna show you exactly how this is done, okay? So here, what I can do is I can create something like this and I can put in another stroke. So I've got my stroke here. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of my appearance panel and I'm gonna click on the add a new stroke. It puts in a new stroke here and surprisingly enough, it keeps the old one selected. But I'm gonna select this stroke and because this stroke is underneath this one here, I'm gonna change the color, say to red here and nothing shows up because this stroke is on top at 10 points and this one's on the bottom at 10 points, so they're both the same size. But when I increase that size there, you can see that I can then get that stroke on the object and it is behind this stroke, okay? I didn't draw another shape here. I just put another stroke underneath this existing stroke. Now you'll notice when we stroke something, the stroke is always in the center of my object. And the way we know that is when we click on the stroke link, I can align the stroke to the center of my object. I can align it so that it occurs inside the shape or align it so that it goes outside the shape. I'm gonna keep it on the center here. So equal parts inside and equal parts outside the shape. Now, when I do this orange ring here, I look at this and say, oh, you know what? I don't like that orange coming on the inside here. So I can either go in and set my stroke to be on the outside, so it completely goes on the outside of my stroke and doesn't show behind the black one inside the shape and outside the shape. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is taking this stroke and actually dragging it behind, so the black stroke is on top, then I have my green fill, and then I have my orange stroke behind there. So different ways of doing this, but keep in mind that you do have different options. I can have it completely inside the shape, completely outside the shape as well. Kind of cool. 
I'm going to do another stroke on the outside here. And so I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this in purple and do this as well. And of course I have to beef up the stroke weight because I need to make sure that it's, you know, layer two. And it'll also tell you that the stroke is on the outside right here. Because if you didn't know that it was on the outside, then you wouldn't be able to go in and see what was going on. You'd have to click on the stroke and be like, oh, okay, so it is aligned to the outside of my shape. Okay, so it does tell you that, which is really helpful. And then I'm going to go in and I'm gonna add yet another stroke on here to kind of create this green here. So there it is. I'm gonna grab this green color, put that on there, and I'm gonna beef up this stroke as well. So it too is on the outside of my shape. So there's my shape and I'm kind of mimicking this as well. So I've got multiple strokes. And again, I only have one shape, folks. Why is this so helpful? Because now I don't have to go digging through shape after shape after shape piled on top of each other to find out where these things are. It's all right here in my appearance panel. We can open up everything here just to make it look really special. There it is, okay? When you go back to your appearance panel, always make sure that you select your shape again. It's very common that you click off that shape and then you make some edits in the appearance panel and nothing happens, all right? So now I wanna get this dimensional thing here. Well, I can go in and I can also put effects on here. And under the effect window here, we've got all these different things. We can do stylize, drop, drop shadow, feather, inner outer glow, scribble, distort, transform. So I could go in and say, take one of my strokes here, and I could apply a special effect just to this stroke, okay? Not to the entire object. And I can do this either by going under effect and choosing here, or because we're right here on the appearance panel, let's just call up it right at the bottom here with a little effects button. Just makes it that much easier. Under the distort and transform, I'm gonna do, say, a little bit of a zigzag here. And the zigzag allows me to go in and have smooth or corner points to kind of create a little, you know, little waffle-like effect on the line, which is kind of cool, okay? And I can just reduce that down. There it is, there's that little effect. Now you can see in my appearance panel, I have the zigzag effect. And I can simply turn it off and turn it on by applying this eyeball here, clicking it in the eye, poke it in the eye, as I say. If I want to edit this zigzag effect to change anything, go back here to the link, simply click on it, make sure your image is active here, your content is active, and then you can go in and you can change the attributes right here on there. Now, if you like what's going on here, you can go in and you can copy this effect right here by holding down your Option or Alt and dragging this down and applying this just dragging it down to another one of your sections here to apply that exact same effect. Now, here's the interesting part. When you apply an effect like this, it is going to be the size, it's based on the size of your object and also the weight of the stroke. Right here, when I drag this down, I notice that it look, gives me a very different effect than it does here, and that's because this stroke is larger. So if I want the same stroke here, I need to go back in and I need to make sure with this zigzag, I would have to go in and I would have to adjust this in order to make sure that I get the same style and the same look and feel. It does require some adjustment. So a wholesale copy or option or alt click and drag from one layer to another will get you the effect, but it may not be the same simply because the weight of the stroke or the size of that particular stroke um, is going to cause it to be different. What I want to show you here, I'm going to turn off the zigzag here. I'm not going to get rid of those. I could just click on the, them and then drag them into the trash. I'll just leave those because, you know, it may be not what I wanted, but later on I may just want to turn them back on. Saves the hassle of me having to remember what I did because this gets really convoluted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the stroke right here, and I want to do something really interesting to this stroke. And this is going to be an effect. Now you'll see how I created this kind of dimensional effect coming out here. And what this is, is this is nothing more than going to this stroke, going to the effects here, doing distort and transform, and doing a transform. This transform effect panel is just absolutely amazing. You can scale the effect and you can move this as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this ever so slightly down and to the right. I'm gonna click on my preview button here. And you can't really see it much because it hasn't done much, but what I'm gonna do is I'm then gonna go in and I'm gonna make multiple copies here. 
And all I'm doing is I'm just putting my cursor in here and doing multiple copies. And if you want this to go a little bit faster, you can go and put a slightly larger number in here and do that. Okay. And now you can see how I can actually take this entire stroke and I can then just take this and duplicate the stroke. Every time I duplicate it, it's going to be two tenths of a millimeter down and to the right. So this is how I can get this kind of tubular effect without doing a 3D, without going in and trying to draw the shape, trace it, whatever else. I can just simply do this super easy. Okay, I'm going to click OK. And now I've got this effect. Not only do I have this effect, but it also makes it look like I've got this transparent tube going on, which that could be really cool. And all it was was just taking this stroke and transforming it. You want to see how that was done? Click on the transform link. This is how it was done. It was shifted off to the right and down, and then just simply repeated X number of times in order to make that happen. So pretty cool, okay? This is all in effect, because if I go use my command or control Y, guess what? It's just a simple shape, which is phenomenal. But I can build all this. Now, I can do an interesting thing with this. If I want to make this a darker green here, where I like to keep this light green on the top, but maybe make this a slightly darker green to make it look like it's a shadow, I'm going to go into this stroke right here, and I'm going to apply a new stroke. And when I apply a new stroke, when I've selected this, it simply copies the old stroke just like that, okay? So it's got the same weight, the same color, same everything else, but it doesn't copy any of the effects. So with this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this light green on top, and I'm gonna to go to this darker green here and apply the darker green for this stroke right there and put it in so that it transformed the whole thing right there, okay? Now, unfortunately, this is on top and this is on the bottom here. So if I go in and if I set the stroke smaller here on top, of course, <laughs> this is what happens. I forgot to select the shape, all right? And this, it always happens. I'm like doing this, like why isn't it doing anything? Because you accidentally click off it. I just want to show you that I do this, it happens, and it's like, why isn't it doing anything? I forgot to select the shape, okay? So don't feel bad. So let me do that again. So I've got my light green. I'm going to add a new one here, and I'm going to change this stroke down below to be a darker green like that. There we go. So now we get this kind of effect where we've got the light green, but it makes it look like it's kind of a shadow coming down the side here, which is totally cool. But because this was an open circle right here, and we filled it with this green to begin with, right there, again, make sure you select your shape when you do this, okay? You can see that it fills it all the way back there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fill, and I'm going to duplicate this fill so I get it. And then I'm going to take this duplicate fill and put it all the way up here so that it's down below my black, but on top of everything else. And then I can go in with this fill and I can change this fill to any color that I'd like right here to create that really cool effect. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It is. So what we have here is, remember to select your shape. I forget that all the time because it's very easy to click off. And then of course your singular focus is, I wanna change this and you go through all your changes here and it hasn't been selected. So I just wanna walk you through this. There's the stroke on top, followed by the fill underneath that stroke. But then I've got this orange stroke underneath, but it's on the outside, okay? And I've got the purple stroke, which is underneath on the outside, but larger, so it sticks out. And then I've got this stroke on top here, and I've got this other darker green stroke, but this is set up to transform, to push it off to the side. And then, you know, the reality of it is this green fill is no longer necessary because we filled that in. However, what's cool is that we can turn that off and we can see kind of this hole going through. And if we wanted to make it look like it was open, guess what we could do? We could go into this fill and make it white, okay? To make it basically make it look like the tube is going through. Well, that's cool. Or we can say, you know what? No, I want that orange. I'm gonna turn that fill on there to make it look solid. So this is just like amazingly cool. And now if I go in and I draw any other shape here, Say I draw a polygon, I can get this, and I could take my eyedropper tool, and with my eyedropper tool, which is the letter I, I'm going to go in and just simply eyedropper on this shape, and it picks up all the attributes right there. If your eyedropper tool does not work, okay, and does not pick up everything, the reason why is when you call up your eyedropper tool as a default right here, okay, let me double click on the eyedropper tool, what will happen is this appearance button will be unchecked, but every single thing will be checked over here. 
For some odd reason, if this button is not checked, it will only pick up certain attributes. Just make sure that that is checked and every single one is checked there. And then when you draw a new shape, like so, and then you use your eyedropper tool and you come over and sample something, this makes sure this button is checked. If, it, if this button right here is not checked, it'll pick up everything, most everything, but not everything. And I'm not sure why it does that, but that's the key to making it happen. Now, what's the beauty of this is, well, you can go through and you can take and you can like mess with your corner widgets on these shapes. If you want to, you can do anything that you want to with these shapes. Let me just grab a rectangle here, grab my eyedropper tool, sample that, applies everything. I could grab a corner widget with my direct selection tool. I could corner widget that and all these attributes just stay with it. I don't have to create new shapes, put them in front, put them behind, scale them however you want to. Scaling, however, is an issue. So in the properties panel, when you go in and you would like to scale something, one of the things that you definitely want to do when you're going in and scaling something is you want your transform panel. And in your transform panel, you want to click on your more options here or just call up your transform panel under the window menu. And if you do not scale your strokes and effects, this could have a totally different look and feel to this. So if I went ahead and I scaled this larger, you'll notice that the stroke weights and everything do not scale with it, okay? They all stay exactly the same, all right? But as I make this smaller, it looks like this slip shadow is getting bigger, and if I make this bigger, it makes it look like it's getting smaller. It's both the same size, okay? The difference is, is that the object looks bigger, which makes this look smaller. If you wanna go through and make sure that everything scales, go to your properties panel or your transform panel, if you're in your properties panel, go to transform, click on the three dots to show more and say, scale your stroke and effects. Then when you scale something like this, all your stroke and effects will get smaller as it scales or get larger as it scales, okay? If you want them to change size when the overall object changes size. If you don't want it to do that, make sure you turn that off. If you don't want the corners to scale, then don't check the scale corners. If you do want the corners to scale, you can check that. So as you make this bigger, the corners will scale as you want with the size of the object and it will scale smaller as you make it smaller. If you don't scale the corners, they will remain that same size and as you make it smaller, it may look like the corners will encroach on the shape whereas you make it bigger and it looks like the corners are barely even there because it's all based on the overall size. But this appearance panel is something that's truly amazing. Um, it's absolutely awesome. I love it. It is so cool to be able to do this, but it is kind of, you know, hard to wrap your mind around everything because each and every element on the selected item can be changed in the stroke attributes, the colors, the weight, anything that's applied to it, any effect on there. And each and every one of these has its own opacity and blending mode change here. So if you wanted something to blend differently, you could change this and the attributes. That's where it gets crazy hard to go ahead and understand what's going on. But you know what? This is how some of the really cool stuff is created. And these are all just basic shapes, folks, with all of these really cool appearance attributes on it. So that's the appearance panel, just kind of notched up a little bit more. So hope you enjoyed it. Check out my other videos as well and see what other cool things you can do because there's a whole lot more to Illustrator.